I have made a lot of music using groove boxes and going out of my way to use them entirely self-contained on their own. And I've learned a few tricks for getting the absolute most out of them that they can offer to make songs that sound full and can hold a listener's attention for their duration. So today I want to talk about the methods that I've discovered that I've found the most helpful over the past couple years. I'm gonna get much more specific and down to earth in a second, but my first tip is kind of meta advice, and that is go exclusive with that groove box. Take a couple of weeks or even a month and only allow yourself to make music on that device. So for instance, uh, I used to make a ton of music on the Novation circuit. I would take this everywhere with me and that became my primary mode of making music for a long time. The Roland MC-101 has started to become that as well. And these I've spent countless hours with and when that's all you're allowing yourself to use, you are going to find ways to get the ideas in your head out into them because, well, what other option do you have? Obviously this can be self-imposed or maybe it is the only device you have, but regardless, go exclusive with those devices at least for a bit to really force yourself to learn them deeply and to find creative solutions to the limitations you end up running into. What is my hair doing, bruh? My second piece of advice is probably the most useful and is also incredibly practical. And this is to do everything you possibly can to maximize the limited track count that you have. Different devices count tracks differently, but let me talk about a few ways that this can pop up. First of all, on the Innovation Circuit, this has only two synth tracks. And so often I will have one synth track be polyphonic and pulling double duty. A great example of this is my synthwave song, Concrete, Steel, and Neon. I had most of the synth stuff going on on just one synth track, with it playing this bass arp thing and a melody over the top of it, and for most of the song, that was enough, and the other track was only there to add some like sound effects and a little bit of ambience. <laughs> Maybe in comparison to a proper track that does sound a tad empty, but that is not bad for being only one synth track. And I can continue to build on that using the other synth track. And I would recommend doing this whenever you can. Having bass and chords on the same track works quite well. Having lead and bass on the same track can work because they're in totally different ranges and so will sound kind of different. And I've done quite a few chord and lead combinations and I've had that work pretty well. Although probably the most common thing that I use and probably the easiest to get into is the bass and chords on the same track that I mentioned at first. There are other ways to get the most out of tracks as well. For instance, the model cycles and a lot of other electron stuff allows for parameter locks. So each step can have a unique set of settings. And using this can allow you to cram as many things as possible onto one track so that the other tracks are left free for whatever you need them to do. A super simple example on the model cycles is having your closed and open hi-hat on the same track and you just change the length of that sound. But of course you could take this much further by having like an entire drum part on one track, like a kick and snare that just don't ever hit at the same time, and then hi-hats filling in the gaps, that's absolutely doable. And the Novation Circuit has something similar, sample flip, where each of the four individual drum tracks can switch between a bunch of different samples. So I'll often load up a kick and a snare on one track, and then hi-hats on another track, percussion on another track, and that still leaves the fourth track free for whatever else I want. And for something like the Roland MC-101, it handles samples really nicely and you can have a bunch of samples all going at once. So once again, I will load up that drum track full of sounds so it's like multiple tracks just crammed into one. <laughs> Obviously, these are just a few examples with a few specific pieces of gear, but translate this thinking to whatever gear you find yourself on and maximize both the synth and the drum or sample tracks that you have. And also try to think about what are the minimum viable elements for your style of music and focus on those, get those on lock, and then if you have the tracks or the space or the CPU or whatever to add something else, then go for it, but try to focus on the fundamentals of what makes a genre recognizable.
The other major thing that has helped me get the most out of my groove boxes and keep a listener engaged, even though I have limited tracks, is to focus on composition, but even more importantly, focus on variation. And often I will actually make fairly chaotic songs that go through a lot of really dramatic changes over the course of the song. So where it ends up is very different from where it started. A great example is my song, Trippy. I'm not gonna play the entire thing here. I'll link it at the end of this video. But over the course of the song, it goes from vaporwave to trap to dubstep to hyperpop, all within the space of like a three minute song. And of course, you don't have to take that as far as I do. Someone who is absolutely the master of slowly evolving songs with minimal track counts is Peyton Carter. I'll link one of his songs at the end of this video as well. But he is able to use filter movement and changes in parameters and interesting evolving melodies to really elegantly build up a song over time. So focus on variation, both in timbre and in composition, and that will take you very far and make you a better producer. Those two things have been huge for me, for making these devices kind of my primary music production platforms and actually getting them to compete with something I made in a DAW. But there are a few others as well. One is to get really comfortable with heavily manipulating samples and patches. Typically, you're gonna have a limited number of presets and sounds on a device. And so if you find yourself wanting to make a certain style of music but don't have anything that's super conducive to it, I would say, don't worry about it. Take what you have and manipulate it as much as you possibly can. Tweak the synth parameters heavily, manipulate the sample with pitch and length and distortion and EQ and all that kind of stuff. Try to make it work even if you have suboptimal patches and samples. This will make you a better producer and also can create some cool sounds in their own right and is a lot more powerful than you'd initially think. And kind of the inverse of that, load in an entirely new set of sounds if you're using a groove box that is capable of that. It can often feel like getting an entirely new device and can make you feel a lot more creative and can also help combat gear acquisition syndrome. And finally, it can sometimes be worth recording the individual tracks of what you've created, bringing them into your DAW and manipulating them further, either layering more stuff in, adding more processing and other stuff like that. With a lot of inexpensive groove boxes, that can take a bit of effort. You have to solo each track and then kind of line stuff up manually, but that's not as hard as you think. I did an entire video on that that I will also link at the end of this video. But some groove boxes will allow you to directly export WAV files or record individual tracks simultaneously. I definitely would recommend doing this if you really want to add some extra polish to the track you're working on and have it stand up to anything made in a DAW. Some people like to use their groove boxes more as kind of sketch pads than proper DAWs in boxes. And I definitely prefer to keep stuff self-contained, but I have absolutely exported individual tracks when I can. The Roland MC-101 is especially good for that because you can do live jamming and record the individual audio tracks over USB. That is a special case and not everything can do that, but you can still do it with workarounds. And those are my super general tips for getting the most out of any groove box you happen to come across. If you have anything else that's helped you, be sure to leave it in the comments below. And if you'd like to check out any of the videos that I alluded to during this video, you can click or tap all over here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.